Hi everyone, welcome to Live from Our Library and Scholastic Parents page. And today our theme is Books for the Summer. Thank you for your patience. We had a little bit of technical difficulties. We're getting started, but hopefully everybody can uh, see the broadcast and we'll you know, keep pushing forward. So I wanted to start off just talking about you know, why we're talking about summer reading right now. And I have two reasons in particular to focus on it. One, of course, it's towards the end of the school year. Everybody's getting close, teachers, students, parents alike, counting down the days till summer for various reasons. And um, Scholastic, at Scholastic, we have the Summer Reading Challenge, which opened on May 8th, so that kids can read different books, record their minutes, and they could do this individually, they can do it with their school or community group, and it's just kind of a way to set a goal for yourself and keep track and get little rewards and uh, keep pace with friends and stuff like that. And also, the second reason that I wanna talk about it is because uh, one of the things that we did research on in our Kids and Family Reading Report is the Summer Slide. And if you haven't heard of the Summer Slide, Summer Slide is kind of, you think about the school year taking you know, up 10 months or so, and then you learn all these different things. And then over the course of the summer, if someone's not engaged with reading or something that's you know, sort of STEM or mathematical or in the arts, then they may potentially fall you know, back just a little bit and forget some of the things that they learned the year previous. So if you think of it, it's almost like you, know, you take two steps forward and then one step back, two steps forward and one step back. And it may not be that drastic. It might be more like five steps forward and one step back. But if you can figure out a way to help your children maintain engagement with different things, you know, you want to kind of be surreptitiously academic over the course of the summer, then they can move into the next year without having fallen behind it at all. And then they'll have improved educational outcomes as they go forward. So one of the first things I pulled before we get to the recommendations, I mean, this is a recommendation. Oh, I should also say, we're sitting here at my desk. We're trying a new background. Um, so this, this is where I work. So you've got Harry Potter here with me at all times, overseeing what I'm doing. But I wanted to share with you the Weekly Reader Summer Express. These are workbooks. This is, you know, you may, you may not be excited to see these when you break these out, but these are some books that are specifically designed for between the different grade levels. So this first one you're looking at is uh, grades four and five. And then we've got grades three and four. Each one's got a fun summer picture between grades two and three. There's stickers, awards inside between grades K and one, and then between grades pre-K and K. So these are some books that you can get that have various activities inside of them, and you know stickers are always fun that you can use, as well as just encouraging folks to read for fun. So talking about books for summer, I wanted to start off with my favorite book like I've been trying to do that at the beginning and this is I've talked about this before I'm pretty sure I want to go home by Gordon Corman and this is by the author who started writing for Scholastic when he's about 13 years old or so I've told the story I think once or twice but this is a book that he wrote when he was probably a teenager um, and Rudy Miller is the main character. He's at summer camp. Um, I, I picked the, my theme as we're talking about summer. I have a lot of books that have to do with summer camp, day camp, trips, and things like that. And Rudy can't stand being at camp, and he tries to run away all of the time. He drives his counselor, Chip, crazy. This book used to make me laugh out loud and get in trouble at school. And I just wanted to read you the letter that he writes home to his parents when he is at camp. And he says, Dear Mom and Dad, this place is terrible. Each day I'm subjected to countless atrocities. The food is spoiled and poisonous, and the drinking water is contaminated, so there's an outbreak of typhoid. Our cabin collapsed last night in a typhoon, but don't worry, only one guy got killed. It's not all bad. I do have one friend named Mike. He's the one who pulled me out of the quicksand. I have, a haul, I have to haul garbage every day, but there aren't too many wild animals that at the dump and have only been bitten twice. Mr. Warden, the director, is very nice and he has a real social conscience. He hires only desperate criminals as counselors. Our bunk counselor, whose name is Chip, is a reform ex murderer on parole. He has red eyes and yells a lot and keeps an ax under his mattress. Tonight is really gonna be fun. Our cabin hasn't been fixed yet, so we get to sleep in trees. I sure hope the typhoon doesn't start up again. 
I'll be safe and sound so long as Algonquin Island doesn't sink any further. Your son, Rudy. P.S. If this letter looks messy, it's because I'm writing it while being chased by a bear. So I thought this was this entire book was hilarious. He he runs away, and every time he gets away, he kind of finds his you know he. It's about the thrill of the chase, and it's the first time I understood that phrase. Rudy is just trying to, you know, have some fun and engage by running away, and then he usually gets away, and then he turns around and comes right back. So we have a question ready, so I'm going to take a look and see what we've got. And in fact, I wanted to also thank everybody who submitted questions early ahead of time. So Aaron Durand, Holly Sloan, and Belen Leon all submitted questions for us before we even got started. So the one from Holly Sloan says, Demosa, I'm looking for an early chapter, early chapter book suggestions for my kindergartner who is at a late first grade, early second grade reading level. I need books that are at his reading level, but also appropriate for a typical kin kindergartner. Thanks for your help. And thank you for your question. So the ones that I pulled, early chapter books, these are, I, I guess I always like funny things, right? This is by Dan Gutman, who I've uh, talked about before with funny books, and the series is called My Weird School. So there's My, wait, My Weird School, My Weirder School, and then there's also My Weirdest School, and they all have rhyming titles. So this one is Mrs. Dole is Out of Control, and then Officer Spence Makes No Sense, and Miss Cuddly is Nutty. And so it kind of goes through different uh, types of teachers that are in the school, and these are, you know, beginning chapter books. And I think, you know, that it might be something that would be appealing to your child who's at a first, second grade reading level. All right, and then the oh, the other one that I pulled that's uh, nonfiction is this Who Is series. There's the Who Is, What Is, Who Was for people who are no longer with us. This one in particular is Who Is Stanley, and it's about you know the guy who founded Marvel. So let's see, now I'm going to keep on going with books that are for the, you know, toddler age folks who are not in school yet. And we will post this list when we're done with the chat so everybody can see it. So this is also a favorite of mine, but I kind of slid it into the early reader um, list. This is Elisha Cooper's Beach. He also has a book called Farm and a book called Train. And I am a huge, you know, beach lover and the illustrations in this book are fabulous. You know, this just reminds me of the lifeguard setting up in the morning, going home at the end of the day, and it's got wonderful landscape, you know, images of the beach and different pictures, you know, and stuff like that that the child can point to. All right, and then I've also got this one, which is The Night Before Summer Camp. This is written to kind of the, the poetic tune of The Night Before Christmas, and this is by Natasha Wing and illustrated by Mindy Pierce. And put this down here. Then I've got Dear Mrs. LaRue, Letters from Obedience School. And so this is not quite a camp story per se, but the dog is in obedience school. And much like the letters that I, the one letter that I read to you from Rudy when he's writing home from camp, this, uh, in this one, the dog is writing home letters to his owner, and it's almost the same vein of humor, just kind of making it seem as if it's a horrible situation that he's in, but really you can see from the images that it's a quite posh camp or a obedience school. All right, and then moving into books for pre-K, for kindergarten, first and second grade, I've got this one by Karen Hess. It's called Come On Rain, and this book is set in the city, and it's, you know, it's a hot, steamy day, much like we're starting to experience here on the East Coast. And you've got some folks who are just like the colors, just evoke the heat, and they're just waiting for that humidity to get to the point where it breaks and turns into rain. And at the end of the book, when it actually does finally break and rain, the little uh, girl asks if she can put on her bathing suit and go outside and dance in the rain. And so there's you know, a beautiful sequence of folks doing that at the end, and also has some rhyming to it. So Come on Rain by Karen Hess. And then I've got this one, which is The Day the Crayons Came Home. Now, some of you are probably familiar with The Day the Crayons Quit by Drew Daywald and illustrated by Oliver Jeffers. It's a wonderful book. This one is kind of a sequel, and it features some of the colors in the crayon box that are, you know, not the ones that come in the kind of traditional box of eight or twelve or something like that. You've got 
magenta, you've got a glow-in-the-dark crayon, and are, they're on your different trips and adventures and writing home and talking about how they were left behind or had to make their way back. And you see this one's got the stick with the bag over his shoulder. And so this would be kind of a good summer adventure story to read. And then finally, I have from our you know wonderful uh, Rainbow Magic series with the Rainbow Magic Fairies, this one is Kara the Camp Fairy. And so if you've got somebody who's a huge fan of the Rainbow Magic Fairies, they've got all these different um, kind of sub-series within that. So there's sports fairies, the fairy tale fairies, and stuff like that. And I pulled this one, which is the Camp Fairy that I thought would be appropriate for talking about summer and camp. All right, so we're gonna look and see what questions we've got. All right, from over V to Page, we are gonna post the book list. Sunitha Kathy, hi, could you recommend some fiction and nonfiction for a kid going into third grade? She's much, she's much interested in chapter books but tries to avoid nonfiction. So going into third grade, with some of the fiction series that we have, they're actually starting to put out sort of companion books that have nonfiction to interest somebody who is into the series. So if you look at, um, I think it's the Magic Treehouse series by Mary Pope Osborne, there are books that are the fictional book, and then there's something called the Magic Treehouse Fact Checker, which is a book that's nonfiction and kind of uh, goes over the same topics that occurred in the fictional book. Those series is immensely popular. Um, the one, uh, you know, one of the ones that stands out to me is there's a book that takes place in Egypt, and so in the Fact Checker, it's kind of going through, you know, what is the actual history of some of the places and the different you know moments that they talk about in the fiction book and that would probably be good for somebody going into third grade the fly guy series which is a little younger also has books that are um, fly guy presents so the, there's the fly guy series there's prince fly guy um fly guy there's one a pet for fly guy i think there may be eight or so books that are fiction and then they're all now these uh, Fly Guy presents books, and there's one for sharks, I think there's one for firefighters and stuff like that. So if somebody really enjoys one of those popular series, then there are some series now where they're starting to create nonfiction that goes along the same lines. And uh, you could always try to do a pairing like that. If you see that your child is picking out a particular book at the bookstore or the library, then you can look in the nonfiction section and see if there's something on a similar topic. And maybe, you know, if you pair those together, and you know, read them in rapid succession and for bedtime, you know, read the fictional story and then go to the nonfiction. That might be a way to try to bridge the interest from one to the other. All right, great question. Let's take a look. And do I have a summer list for seventh graders? Yes, I'm going, that's from Sandra Beeman and Bobby Nicole Rose, also asking for seventh or eighth grade. So I've got some books here that I'm gonna go through for that. And then, Paula Proust, my third grader, loves historical nonfiction books like the I Survive series. He's read them all. Do you have any other chapter book recommendations that's close to the I Survive series? Let me think about that one. The I Survive series I know is a fictional series, but it's based on real-time events, and there's also the I Survive True Tales series. Um, we have a series called Ranger in Time. It uh, features a golden retriever that travels through time. It's a chapter books that are probably around the same uh, reading level as the I Survive stories. And I'm trying to think if they're a little bit over, a little bit under, but they do feature different moments in history. So there's one where the um, Golden Retriever is on the Oregon Trail. There's another one where there's an experience on the Underground Railroad. And uh, there are more that are continuing to come. And I, in my, I will think and try to remember the name of the author. But Ranger in Time is the name of the series. All right, so we're gonna jump into from, we just did uh, very young, before school, readers, toddlers, and the like, and then we did um, K1 and two. And so now for upper elementary school, people who are in third, fourth, and fifth grade, I pulled maybe one more book than I should have, but I couldn't resist talking about Sisters. This um, book by Raina Telgemeier, she won the uh, award, the Eisner Award for best um, illustrator and writer, like, you know, combinations. So somebody who writes and illustrates their own story. It's a beautiful story and it features a road trip and two sisters, you know, that are having to sit together and get along on this road trip. 
Um, this, it's a memoir, so it's based on her own experience, and she also gets to kind of see the dynamics of what's going on with her mother and her father. She's on the road trip with her mother, and her father joins them later. So, you know, this is the main character with the headphones and her little sister with the little glare there. And this is an excellent book. Okay, so I'll put that there. Uh, the next book that I've got is the DC comic Secret Hero Society, Fort Solitude. Fort Solitude, in this case, is actually the... Um, kind of treehouse that they have going here. The first book uh, in this series, they found themselves all in the same school and you had uh, a young Bruce Wayne, a young Diana, a young Clark Kent. And then in this book, we get some more characters that show up in the DC universe and the um, Justice League and stuff like that. And as they're at camp, there are campers that are disappearing one by one. And Bruce, of course, is using his powers of deduction to try to figure out what's going on. And like the first book, it also is a series of kind of comics, memos, emails, chats. It's a, kind of an amalgam of different formats all put together. So it's not your traditional, you know, front to back chapter book, but it's got, you know, Clark's journal. You can see the cell phone screen and they're texting each other and stuff like that. And it was a very enjoyable read for me. The next one I have here, I think I talked about last summer, almost a year ago, when I first started doing these. This is One Crazy Summer by Rita Williams Garcia. It's the first book in her trilogy. And in this book, the you know, as opposed to a sleepaway camp, you have these girls who travel to visit their mother and their mother who's very um, kind of busy and engaged at what's going on in the current events of the world, um, wants them to go to Black Panther camp. And so they, you know, are kind of in a place where they're you know, it's almost like you know, thinking about summer slide. They have to go participate in something that's academic and political, and so it's a great you know story that just kind of tells you the setting and the times and stuff like that, and gives you some insight into what the program was that the Black Panther Party at the time was putting together for young children. So, Rita Williams Garcia, as you can see, also has there's three medals on the cover for this book, and every time that she wrote a book in this series, she got a, a Critic Scott King Award for the uh, author, and so it's, uh, it's critically acclaimed as well as enjoyed. And then this one I've got here is Safe at Home by Sharon Robinson. She's the daughter of Jackie Robinson, and in this book we have a young man who ret he moves to the city for the first time and he goes to baseball camp. So I myself used to run track and go to a sports camp, um, you know, track and field camp where we had to just run miles and miles and miles as soon as the bell went off in the morning. So we're gonna take a break and see what questions we've got. So we're almost to seventh and eighth grade, and then, oh, Bell and Leanne, can I have a first grader, third grade, and eighth grader recommend books? And then Erin Duran, I want to have my three children, kindergarten, third, and fourth grade, read books according to a general theme. This would allow me to coordinate projects and field trips. Can you please recommend some books to meet my students' reading level within a general theme or two? Uh, I mean, and so it's way three different grade levels, kindergarten, third, and fourth grade. Think about that. Let me think about that one while I am going through this next step, because that's a tough question. You've got the three different grade levels and all on the same theme. I mean, off the top of my head, the first thing I think of, because you're talking about trips, um, you know, and I live here in New York City, I imagine going to places like the Botanical Gardens, and one of my favorite museums here is the Tenement Museum, and, you know, finding books that are based on experiences of um, early New York immigrants and stuff like that, because here there would be a lot to do on that theme, and there are books for different age levels that would go with that. Um, the name of the book, there's a book about the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory Fire. You could always, you know, go and visit that site to see, um, I think it's an NYU building now, to see where that took place. Rinaldi wrote that one? I have to think about that. But, um, so, you know, something here that stands out to me is the story of immigrants in New York City and how people were constantly coming through Ellis Island. My great-grandparents on my father's side came through Ellis Island. And I had the opportunity to go there and see their names on the wall, and you can see the ship manifest and see what boat they came on, and then you can find, you know, books that relate to that experience. So depending on where you're living in the country or outside of the country, if there's something that's a big, you know, story point for your area, then you can look up um, and see what museums and uh, 
museums and sites and things like that relate to it. So if you were somewhere along the Oregon Trail, there would be a lot of opportunity to visit different sites and to look up books that have to do with that. Um, you know, if you're in California, of course, um, things that have to do with the gold rush and the Transcontinental Railroad would be a fun one to do. Um, you could always take trips on trains and look at different books. So let me think about that a little more as I go and I'll hopefully I have something for you. So sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, middle school stories. I've got this one by Mike Lupica, who is a sports writer and it's called Summer Ball. So I showed you a book earlier where somebody's in um, base, yeah, baseball camp. And so this one is the story of a young man who goes to basketball camp. And then this story, which we read in our employee reading club, it's called The Lightning Queen by Laura Rousseau. Oh, yeah, I gave you the author for the last one. And this one takes place over the summer. Uh, the narrator starts out a story about how he's going back to Mexico for the summer to spend time with his grandfather. And then we get into a flashback where his grandfather is telling him about this experience that he had over a sequence of summers where some Romani or you know gypsies that are living in Mexico and would travel around and provide entertainment by showing films against kind of a, a wall somewhere to different communities in Mexico, particularly in Mixteco, is what the story is um, elucidating here. And towards the end, you know, it kind of goes back and forth. So you get the story within the story. It reminds me of The Princess Bride, where you've got the young boy and his grandfather reading a book, and then it kind of jumps back out to the two of them talking, and then jumps back into the story. And at the end, uh, in the present day, the boy and his grandfather kind of go on an adventure. So The Lightning Queen by Laura So We really enjoyed it in our playbook club. And then I pulled this one, what I did on my summer vacation, kids' favorite funny summer vacation poems. This is by Stephen Carpenter and Bruce Lansky. And I pulled one here to share with you. I think that these would be funny for the teacher to use at the end of the year or for you know you to read with your children at the end of the night. So this one is called The Teachers Jumped Out of the Windows. The teachers jumped out of the windows. The principal ran for the door. The nurse and librarian bolted. They're not coming back anymore. The counselor, hollering madly, escaped out the door of the gym. The coach and the custodian shouted and ran out the door after him. Oh my, goodbye, they're not coming back anymore, no more. How fun they run, they're not coming back anymore. The lunch ladies threw up their ladles and fled from the kitchen in haste, and all the students looked puzzled and staff members scurried and raced. We'd never seen anything like it, but still it was pretty darn cool to see all the staff so excited to leave on the last day of school. Oh my, goodbye, they're not coming back anymore, no more, how fun. They've run. They're not coming back anymore. And you see that picture of everybody running and jumping out the windows. So that is a fun one, you know, particularly to remember and recite. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm still a sucker for rhyming poems. I do like free verse, but. All right, so we've got a question from Melissa Tucker. Can you recommend some books for a boy going into third grade? And Michaela Patterson, what about a summer list for fourth graders? Angela Peng, any recommendations for a preschooler going to grade one? And Elizabeth Ozdavins, sorry if I messed that up, do you know any great books for a fourth and fifth grade? So we are going to, when we put the list up on the parents um, blog, Raise a Reader, we try to divide it, divide it up by grade level, age level, so that you have a sense of what books will work for each um, group. So I just went through the ones that are six, seven, eight, and we're towards the end with the, we had the last couple here, which are YA or might be interesting to parents. But I am, I try to go through them in order. So if you start back at the top, at the very beginning of the video, then you would see the ones that are for folks that are kind of, um, you know, before pre-K, so toddlers, um, books you could use, with, you know, bedtime, read alouds and stuff like that, or during the day, you know, people take naps, you can have a nap time read aloud. And then um, as we go, then it goes to pre-K one and two, so books that you might be, sometimes like um, the Lexile, which you may hear of if you're dealing with school, they talk about, um, they have this thing AD that's adult directed, so sometimes picture books that will show you, or you might see the teacher doing, they may be a little more complex because the parent reads it with the child and helps them through it, and then other ones are ones that they can start to read on their own. And then after that, we went to three, four, five, then six, seven, eight, and then these last couple I have that are for your young adults and also potentially parents because I read a lot of YA. I have two that are, you hear your summer romances, 
right? This one I read and this one I haven't read yet. So I've got this on my list with Summer, Catch a Falling Star. You've got a, um, a celebrity who moves into a resort town and everybody, you know, he's a teen heartthrob. Everybody's very obsessed with him, except for our main character. She doesn't care. But he has had some kind of stuff going on in the tabloid, so his publicist wants to have a girlfriend for the summer so that everything seems kind of buttoned down and settled and they need to hire somebody so they get the girl who doesn't care about him at all and uh, you know to fake being his girlfriend for the summer and then predictably she starts to fall for him so I enjoyed that story it also has a lot actually um, there's some stuff with uh, astronomy where they like look at the stars and they have a I think a blog or something that they're keeping and then One Silver Summer is a story where a young girl from Brooklyn goes to London and ends up interacting with a prince. She doesn't know at first he's a prince, she just sees a horse and she's you know, interested and excited to play with this horse so she kind of sneaks through the fence and she discovers she's at his grandmother's estate and uh, you know, a little horseshoes for my heart. So there's summer romances. And then No Good Deed by Goldie Moldovsky. This book is going to be coming out soon. I don't think that it's out yet. I think it's the 30th or something that it comes out. Um, we read Kill the Boy Band in our employee book club, and she joined us to discuss it, and we are going to be reading this one next. Um, this book is set in a summer camp where each person at the summer camp has different kind of social justice issues that they are interested in and so they are it's you know kind of like the humor but also a lot of kind of commentary on what's going on in the world today and her last book was hilarious uh, that I think it's available in paperback now and so I would highly recommend this one though I haven't read it yet and I'm sure it's gonna be great and then the final thing that I have here is Marcello in the Real World by Francisco Stork. I pulled this one, I mean, this is one of our kind of, you know, our classics. It's an excellent book. Everything that Francisco Stork writes is really good. And this has a young man whose father is pushing him to do a summer internship because he kind of wants him to grow up a little more and engage with people in the real world. And Marcello reluctantly goes into his father's office every day and ends up Kind of getting a little more involved than he intended to be. I mean, this one brought tears to my eyes at different points, and I thought it was really touching and well written. It's, you know, we have all these in different languages downstairs, and it continues to do well, so I just wanted to bring that out. Um, you know, for a story of teenage, you know, a lot of teenagers have to work during the summer, so the other one, both of this one and this one, you've got um, um, teenagers with summer jobs, which you know, some of their summer camp and then their summer jobs. So let's see if we have any more questions. Let's see, we've got, can you recommend from Anise Shao? My daughter loves reading books such as Wonder and Short. Can you please recommend some books related to this kind of topic? She's going to fifth grade. Sima Mattel. Hi there from Tanzania. Wow. Any picture book recommendations for the summer? And Erica Jimenez, my sixth grade likes warrior cat books. Do you know of a series or two similar to that? So let's work our way backwards. Um, the Warrior series, which has cats, though the next one I would recommend is Guardians of Gahul, which is a series that has a lot of owls in it. There's also um, the Underland Chronicles, which is by Suzanne Collins, who's the author of The Hunger Games. I th believe there are five books in the series. There's a, it's a middle grade or, you know, somebody that's a later elementary could also, you know, read it very easily and he ends up underneath the, um, kind of, underneath New York City. His sister, who's a toddler, she tumbles down a hole in the laundry room and goes into this underground world and he has to go rescue her and then he finds out that he is this kind of predestined hero, much like Harry Potter you might think, and he's got to basically save the world. There's a prophecy associated with him, and there are all these different animals. That's the reason why it comes to my mind, because Warriors is, is a story, we talk about anthropomorphize, where you have books where animals um, can walk and talk and have thoughts and interactions and stuff like that. So Guardians of Kahul is similar to that. Um, Miss Frisbee and the Rats and Nim is a good book. Um, the Underland Chronicles, there's this whole kind of war and political thing that's going on under, underground that Gregor becomes a part of. So that is what I would recommend there. Picture book recommendations. We had The Day the Crayons Came Home. The first book for that is The Day the Crayons Kit, Quit. Um, we also have a book called Ice Cream Summer by Peter Siss. I didn't put it in this list, but that's a great uh, summer book. 
and I had Beach by Elisha Cooper and um, Letters from Obedience School by um, um, LaRue, Letters from Obedience School, and that was by Mark Teague. Let's see, if I, if I can think of better ones, I will, or, or additional ones, I'll add them in there. And then my daughter loves reading books, just says Wonders and Short. And I'm not familiar with Short, I'm thinking it's Wonder, the, the blue book that, um, I know that there's a, there's kind of a nonfiction uh, story with Wonder. I'm gonna take a look and see if I can put an answer to you in the question area, Yunisha. And if you could um, give me the authors of Wonder and Short, then that would help me to find the book and then give you some good recommendations for that. And then my son loved the I Survive series is in the eighth grade, something similar for that age level. They're actually, so there's two I can think of. There's a series by Critch Crutcher. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the series. There's one that's about Vietnam specifically. And then there's another series. I believe that Chris Crutcher does both of them. Um, I'll clarify in the comments section. One, There's one series that I'm thinking of where it's set in different wars that happen uh, over the course of United States history. And then the Vietnam series specifically is a five book series that um, follows different folks, you know, throughout the course of the Vietnam War. So those are two that may be um, interesting to somebody who read I Survive. And I will take a look and see if I can answer some more in that um, question in the comments. If anybody has any suggestions for any of the questions, please go ahead and respond in the comments section. And I will take a look um, and make sure that I answer all of your questions the best that I can in there. I also wanted to say that we know that we've noticed that some of the questions that we've gotten over the past couple of Facebook lives, people have been asking questions specifically about when your child has dyslexia or ADHD, ADHD or ADD, um, um, Asperger's and autism and stuff like that. And I just wanted to recognize that and we didn't get an opportunity this month to pull that together. It is Mental Health Awareness Month. so. We were talking about stuff that has to do with summer and summer reading and summer slide, but I wanted to recognize that we've been seeing those questions and that we're going to pull together either um, you know a list with some specific books that may be interesting, but also some of the different resources that already exist um, among different book lists and different places on Scholastic Parents and other Scholastic sites and other places on the internet so that we can answer that question that's been coming through. But continue to ask. I enjoy getting that because it challenges me to try to expand myself as a librarian and find things that will work for you. So it was a pleasure working with you today and talking to you about different books. Um, remember Summer Slide, keep them reading over the summer and doing different STEM activities. And we're gonna have the list posted on the Razor Reader blog. Um, you can go to scholastic.com backslash parents.